So we have an easy way to differentiate between diastereomers. For instance, in the molecule on the left, the hydrogens associated with the double bond, one goes up and the other one goes down, so that is trans pent to ene. The other one on the right has both of those hydrogens associated with the double bond going in the same direction, so that is cis to butene, or cis pent to ene rather. What about designating this pair of stereoisomers of butane to all? Well, it's kind of a mouthful to say, all right, this is the isomer of butane to all where when the methyl group's down into the left and the ethyl group is down into the right, the hydroxyl is coming toward you. And this is the isomer of butane 2 all, where when the methyl group is down into the left and the ethyl group is down into the right, the hydroxyl group is going away from you. Seriously, I don't even want to write out those descriptions. There's got to be an easier way. And guess what? There is, and it's called the kahn ingold prelog system. In fact, according to the kahn ingold prelog system, the molecule on the left is R-butane-2-all, and the molecule on the right is S-butane-2-all. The steps for assigning a chirality center as being R or S. First, you want to prioritize the groups. And since there are four groups, you're going to prioritize them A through D. A is highest, then B, then C, then D, which is the lowest priority. And how do we prioritize? We go by atomic number. Right, so... The atomic number Z of the atoms involved gives you a higher priority. So start with the atom that's bonded to your chirality center. What do I have? I've got an oxygen with an atomic number of 8 and a hydrogen with an atomic number of 1 and then two carbons both with an atomic number of 6. So it's clear to see that the hydroxyl group is priority A and the hydrogen is priority D. Now, since I've got Z equals 6 and Z equals 6, I have to go to the next level. My next layer out is three hydrogens, 1, 1, 1, versus a carbon, and two hydrogens. So, six, one, one. That means the ethyl group has a higher priority than the methyl group. So this is B and this is C. So you go layer by layer for your tiebreaker and you keep going until there's a clear winner. How would I break this tie? Right, because clearly we've got a C and a C for the first layer. So we have to go to the second layer. My second layer for the carbon on the left is a carbon, a carbon, and a hydrogen. So C, C, H. For the carbon on the right, I've only got two atoms bonded, another carbon, and another carbon. But because there's a double bond, that counts for two. So it's C, C, C. That means that this group with the double bond is higher priority. Despite the fact 
that the molecular weight of the sec-butyl fragment weighs more. Once you've prioritized your groups, you'll want to rotate the molecule so that the lowest priority group is on a 3D bond, either a wedge or a dash. Now, in the original molecule we're given, this molecule is, or this um, hydrogen, the lowest priority group, is on a dash, so it's already done for us. But what do I mean by rotate? Let me show you. So here's the molecule we were looking at just a second ago. Hydrogen is our D group, that is our lowest priority group, and it's on a dash, so no action needed. What about this molecule? Well, our priorities are bromine has the highest atomic number, then the hydroxyl, then it's going to be the ethyl, and then the methyl is D, and uh-oh, we've got our lowest priority on a flat bond. So that means we need to do something. So what if we did a 90 degree rotation around the vertical axis? So that would put our methyl group on a dash. It would put our ethyl group on a wedge. It would take the hydroxyl group, which was coming toward us, and have it going up and to the left. It would take our bromine, which is going away from us, and have it going up and to the right. And now we've got group D on a dash. That's fine. Now, if we had rotated 90 degrees to the right, then the methyl group would be on a wedge, and the ethyl group would be on a dash, and the bromine would be going up and to the left, and the hydroxyl would be going up and to the right, and either way is fine. This is just to say we don't need to do any more rotation. Once we've got our molecule arranged like this, and everything is prioritized, we draw a curved arrow that starts at the highest priority group and goes A, B, C. And it doesn't matter where the lowest priority group is at this point. All that matters is whether that curved arrow is clockwise or counterclockwise. So let's make a little table. And once you've done this and prioritized your molecule and drawn your curved arrow, there are a total of four possibilities. If your lowest priority group is on a dash, so I've got D on a dash here, and your curved arrow goes counterclockwise, as we've shown here, then that chirality center is designated S. On the other hand, if your lowest priority group is on a dash and your curved arrow is clockwise, then the chirality center is designated R. And if your lowest priority group is on a wedge, then the opposite rule applies. Clockwise is S and counterclockwise is R. Now look over here. This is the original molecule, but rotated 90 degrees um, in the opposite direction from this one. So it's the 180 degree image of this one. And so my curved arrow goes ABC like that. That's clockwise. And my lowest priority group is on a wedge. So again, it's S, right? Whereas here, we had counterclockwise with the lowest priority group on a dash, so S. Now here's a practice question for you. Can you designate this molecule as R or S? So, first you're going to have to do the rotation. Then you're going to have to prioritize. And then you're going to have to do the curved arrow. Pause. Do the problem. Once you've got either R or S, then resume to see the answer. So we'll start out with a rotation. 
we've got this hydrogen on a um, flat bond and it needs to be on a wedge or a dash. So what I think I'm going to do is rotate it 120 degrees around the vertical axis. So doing that rotation keeps the C and the OH where they were, but it exchanges, well, it moves the hydrogen to where the ethyl group was. Whoa. So now I've got my hydrogen back here. And it moves the ethyl group, sorry, this should be a hydrogen. It moves the ethyl group to where the methyl group was. And it moves the methyl group to where the hydrogen was. Okay, so now my rotation is good and I'm going to prioritize hydroxyl, ethyl, methyl, and then hydrogen. Now my curved arrow, ABC, that's clockwise, and I'm clockwise with the lowest priority group on the dash. So referring back to our little table, clockwise with the lowest priority group on the dash is R. So this is R butane to all. And the wedge dash structure for it would look like that.